Hello, welcome back to Math Time with Professor Prime, and I'm your host as always, Professor Prime. And today we're going to talk about math in Resident Evil 4. This has been a long time coming, and Resident Evil 4 is one of my favorite games, so I look forward to this. That being said, uh, just to give you an idea of how things are going to go, I'm going to talk about Resident Evil 4, I'm going to talk about its gameplay, I'm going to talk about its history a little bit, and its impact. Um, and I'm going to talk about how math is used throughout all of those things, right? Um, now, I'm going to try to avoid major story points. However, uh, please feel free to assume that there are spoilers ahead, um, just to be safe, right? And I'm going to talk about at least one um, cool fight. Uh, if you've played the game, you probably know what that is. With that being said, uh, just assume spoilers ahead if you want to continue watching the video, all right? Um, so, let's get into it. Resident Evil 4, aka Biohazard 4, uh, came out back in 2005, originally on the GameCube. Later on that year, it would get ported to uh, PS2 and uh, the PC that same year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, with that in mind, Resident Evil 4 is an awesome game, and there's a lot of math in it. So I look forward to talking about both the game and the math within it. Uh, so to start, kind of comically, but then also kind of seriously at the same time, I mean, the title. <laughs> it's Resident Evil 4. Uh, that, let, that number, right, lets you know something. It lets you know that it's the fourth entry into the main series. Because, um, and that's worth noting, because um, it, it's the fourth in the main series, but I think it's the sixth uh, Resident Evil game overall. Um, that being said, you know, I kind of joke about that, but yeah, it's like <laughs> numbers are there right in the title, so math is there right in the title. But um, it, of course, goes deeper than that, though, right? So if we start with the gameplay and um, focus on that for a bit, I think you'll see what I mean. To start, um, so Resident Evil 4, if you're not familiar with it, it's a third-person um, action-adventure game slash survival horror game. And depending on who you are, you might lean uh, into the more survival horror side or the more action-adventure side when you're describing the game. Uh, for me, it, it's in between. It was the first uh, Resident Evil game, though, to like lean more heavily into the action side. I mean, because, you know, the action's always there. Um, but here, it was um, more geared towards that, while still having that survival horror in it. But again, like depending on who you are, you might say it's more survival horror or more action-oriented. But anyway, going into the gameplay, um, you, you know, you have the idea that it's a third-person shooter, um, and there is math in your movement, there's math in that perspective, third-person, right? That gives you an idea of uh, what that game will be about perspective wise. There's math in um, the different weapons that you get, uh, their sizes, their uh, capacity, um, how you use them. Um, there's math in um, the quick time events, you know, or sorry, quick time events that are featured throughout the game. Um, you know, used largely in like boss fights and among other things uh there are some like context specific uh button presses and there's math in that too there's math in not only that 3d perspective but the type of 3d perspective um so with resident evil 4 it popularized the over the shoulder view and you know there's math in that and how it gets to you and i'd argue it also popularized quick time events which require you to um you know when prompted Press the button at a certain time. There's math in the time um, for that, right? Math in the timing and what it does. So I think that's all pretty cool. And back to the weapons though, there's not only math in like those and how they're designed and their ammo capacities and things like that, um, but there's math in upgrading them, right? Um, and that's pretty cool. Uh, there's math in the health and upgrading that health. There are different items that you get through the game, right? And um, throughout the game, it has an inventory system. Um, you have this like case, like an attache case or however you choose to pronounce that. Um, there's a case though, and it holds a certain amount of items, right? It's a, it's a grid system. 
and it holds a certain amount of items and each item takes up a certain amount of squares on that grid system, right? Um, and you have an option to mix some of those items to create different items like um, with greater effects, like take you to Earth, for, uh, for example. Um, and in any case, there, there's math in that inventory system and the items that you collect and the spaces that they take up, but also the effects they have on you, right? Because some um, do different things. Notably, you'll have um, your first aid sprays, which uh, increase your health. And speaking of health, right, there's math in that. Um, you'll see your uh, health on the screen um, and color coded for different spots of where you're at, like green, red, yellow for how much health you have. Um, and you'll get five units to start, but you can boost it up to 10, um, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so there's math in that, right? And here's the other thing about that health. Um, not only is there math in that, um, but there's math in how that affects the difficulty, or rather the difficulty affects it. I, I'm saying it oddly, but let me explain. <laughs> so there is an adaptive difficulty system in, to, in, sorry, in Resident Evil 4, in addition to its main difficulty setting. Now that's interesting, right? Because like, so it has four difficulty setting with the highest one being unlocked once you beat the game once. Um, so it's like they got amateur, they got uh, easy, normal, and professional. I think uh, with amateur, it was Japanese exclusive, um, or um, sorry, Japan exclusive. And uh, with easy, normal, and professional, um, that's what a lot of other areas would have gotten, right? Um, now with that, throughout, uh, you have different things going on, right? Like um, you, like on lower difficulties, of course, you're gonna take less damage, dish out more damage, that sort of thing. And with higher difficulties, that will change. Um, in lower difficulties, certain areas may not be available uh, because they might be deemed too hard or something like that. Um, and then uh, with higher difficulties, you know, you might have that access, but uh, things are more difficult. But I mention all of that because in addition to that main system, there's an adaptive difficulty system um, that doesn't really get talked about within the game. Um, and the idea is like, if you are taking more hits, right? If you're taking more hits and you're missing a lot, um, it'll adapt to that difficulty, right? So it'll make things a little easier on you, right? And if you are dishing out more damage and you're taking less hits and you know, you're pretty accurate, things like that, um, that's gonna make things actually harder for you. And so you have this adaptive difficulty, this uh, dynamic difficulty setting, um, in addition to the regular difficulty setting. And there's math in that, right? There's math in the hits that you take, there's math in the damage that you're dishing out, um, there's math in your accuracy. And as we just described, there's math in how that affects your gameplay. So, you know, uh, that's worth noting. And then on the professional setting, the hardest difficulty setting, um, the adaptive difficulty does go away. Um, so, for other game, sorry, for the other difficulty setting, right? Um, when I was talking about the adaptive difficulty, it's like it'll make the uh, enemies more aggressive or more passive. But when a professional difficulty setting, they're just they're aggressive all the time, um, and you can't really decrease or increase that. Um, so that's worth noting. So you know, just talking about this a little bit, um, there's math following the gameplay, right? Um, then when you're forming the world, when you're telling that story, there's math in that too. Like there's about 20 chapters in which you have for um, Resident Evil 4. And so that story's playing on for over those 20 chapters. That was a decision that was made. There's math in that, right? There's math in creating that game world. There's uh, math in the engine that you're choosing. There's math in the uh, physics that goes into that game, right? There's math in the music, how it's composed, how it shows up. There's math in the voice acting, and there's math in the you know the volume with that, but also syncing things up. Um, there's math in the energy that goes into that. There's math in the lighting and the sound overall. Um, and so there's a lot of math across the board, but you know you never really sort of hear that sort of thing with gaming, right? And then not only do you have math in the gameplay, and then um, how that game is like forged, you. Um, have math with the marketing, math with the budget. And with Resident Evil 4, it's an interesting game. Before we get that final copy, 
I, there's like uh, about four versions of that were being worked on throughout the years that, you know, led to that final one. Or rather, there was like three versions that preceded that final one, right? For four total. Um, but before you even got to like uh, that part, right? Um, you have talks about Resident Evil, like uh, at the turn of the century, at the turn of the millennium. Um, the millennium. <laughs> And here's the thing, and I, and I think this is a really cool thing. It is something that led to a new IP, right? So before you got these versions of Resident Evil 4, the idea of Resident Evil 4 um, was being handled by Hideki Kamiya, Devil May Cry, uh, Bayonetta, and Platinum Games as a whole fame. Uh, among other titles like Beautiful Joe and Akami, right? Um, so he was working on Resident Evil 4, right? He, he's the one who had that, uh, oh, sorry, he was the one that they gave the idea to before they started like um, actually working on the game. And you know, he wanted something that was cool and something that was stylized and wanted to mix up things like with the camera angle and everything. And eventually though, they decided that, hey, this is too different for a Resident Evil game. But we can't have a new IP out of it. And as a result, we got Devil May Cry. And there's a lot of math in that, which I've covered in depth on this channel <laughs> for several videos. Um, but my whole point is, there is a lot of math that went to development of Resident Evil 4. And not only did we get to that point where we got one of the best games out there, but we got a whole other series in addition to Resident Evil in the form of Devil May Cry, which is one of my favorite gaming series of all time, um, with Devil May Cry 3 being like one of my favorite games. Um, and you know, there, there's math in that and how it all worked and how it all came together. And then you gotta figure, um, not only did Resident Evil popularize uh, the over-the-shoulder view as well as, in my opinion, quick time events, it also impacted just, you know, third person shooters as a whole, action games as a whole, um, with a lot of creators out there um, talking about Resident Evil being an influence, and that's pretty cool to me. Um, and then over years, it's been remastered a lot. It's been on um, a bunch of different systems. Capcom has made a lot of money over it. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, it's sold about 11 million copies um, maybe more at the time of this recording. Um, and you know, there's a lot of money that goes into gaming. Um, and there's a lot of math and money. So that's worth noting. And, um, a few years back, they, uh, made a version of Resident Evil 4 for, um, uh, the Oculus. And so you had this VR version and there's math in that and how they, uh, redesigned things to make that happen. And, um, at the time of this recording, Resident Evil 4 um, uh, remake is on the horizon. I don't know if they're calling it remake. I just, that's what I'm thinking in my head right now. But either way, there's a remake of Resident Evil 4 coming. Uh, I think 2023. Um, but the idea is like, you have this game that at this point is going on 20 years old. And it is still making waves out there, right? People are still talking about it. People are still influenced by, about it or by it. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's like, whew, it's, it's been a day, so I've been trying to roll with this. Um, but yeah, so Resident Evil 4 has impacted a lot in gaming, and I think that's pretty cool. Um, and I'm trying to think of if, there, if there's anything else major that I wanted to say about it. So, um, you know, I think I'll sum up everything. So, with Resident Evil 4... You have this game that is like rich in gameplay, that is deeply interactive, that tells the story in a compelling way, and has impacted a lot of other games. And you know, there's math in uh, the combat, right? Math in the health, math in the inventory system, math in the currency system, which I don't think I've talked about, but the idea is like you can buy items, right? You can buy health items, you can buy upgrades, you can buy different things in this game, and there's math in that, right? So math in the combat, math in the currency system, math in the inventory system, math in how the world is constructed, math in how it's built up and sent out to you, math in the marketing, math in the budget, and match it, sorry, math in the remasters, um, math in the upcoming remake, uh, math in the music, 
math and its placement in Resident Evil and in gaming. And it scored really, really well across the board over the years, right? Like in terms of review. And that doesn't have to mean anything, but those numbers do give people an indication of what people think, right? And that's worth noting. You can take reviews with a grain of salt, of course, but it just like it gives you a general idea of what people are saying, whether it's good or not is another question, right? But the numbers do help, right? Um, so yeah, Resident Evil Forward. It is a juggernaut of a game. And not only is there math in everything that I just mentioned with the game, but there's math in the development process and how that led to another IP that Capcom has made a decent amount of money of. Like there is no um, Resident Evil where you know it without uh, Devil May Cry or rather what led to Devil May Cry um, since the idea for Resident Evil 4 had to start somewhere. But more so than that, there's no Devil May Cry without Resident Evil, without Resident Evil 4 in particular, because that's how it started, right? Um, and I think that's fascinating. So I, I, I like that idea. Um, and it's worth noting that Resident Evil 4 came out in the same year as Devil May Cry 3, like 2005. That was a great year for gaming. A lot of cool stuff came out. Um, yeah, so I'm going to bring this video to a close. Uh, I would like to say, though, um, in addition to all that sort of stuff um, that I mentioned before, there's also the idea of adaptive difficulty that I mentioned. Because Resident Evil 4 isn't the only game that has done that. Um, but... I think it is one of the best examples of it, and I think that's pretty cool too. Overall, Resident Four Evil, <laughs> Resident Evil Four, is a juggernaut of a game that has a lot of math in it and has had a phenomenal impact on gaming, and uh, I'd argue our culture. Like, so that's pretty cool. I'll see you in the next one, Professor Prime. Out.